The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. This is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Today's show is on Zoom, and my special guest today is Robin Wells. Hello. Hello. Welcome to my show. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, you are an author who has written quite a number of novels. Yes. But, uh, okay. Where were you born and raised? Let's we'll start with that. Okay. Well, I was born in Waco, Texas. Um, my father was the director of the Baylor Library. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Long Island, New York, when he became the director of the library at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. This is when they were building it. And then um, when I started junior high, we moved to Stillwater, Oklahoma, when he oh. took a position at Oklahoma State University. And my mother was from Oklahoma, so this was the ideal location he'd been angling for, and uh, that's where they stayed. Is so, still there? Or? Well, he passed away five years ago. Uh, oh, my cool. mom, yeah, my mom passed the year before him. So oh, I have a brother still in Oklahoma, but our condolences, my friend. Yes, they, you know, it, it, you're never quite old enough to be an orphan. <laughs> well, I'm one too. My parents, my mom died when I was 28. That's oh, about, oh, 41 that's years young. Ago. 41 years ago. Well, anyways, and my dad about 2007. Hmm. So sorry. Yeah, well, they're in heaven, so that's far as I there know. You go. There you go. So when you were growing up, who mentored you? Who uh, was your parents or friends or teachers? Well, they were both librarians. Uh, dad at the university level, and then mom was a research librarian at the yeah. university level, but then she became a middle school, a high school librarian, and then a middle school librarian. So um, anyway, I grew up surrounded by books and, um, always, always loved reading, um, used to make up stories before I could even write, and they would write them down for me. Uh, I was just, you know, one of those kids that I, I always wanted to be a writer since, you know, since my earliest memory. So your parents gave you creative juices. They yeah. gave me a love of reading, absolutely, and a love of stories, yes. So it was my parents and also my grandmother who, um, my maternal grandmother loved to tell stories. I remember as a little girl when we would visit her, my brother and I would uh, crawl in her bed in the morning and beg her to tell us a hot tale. That's what she called them. Okay. And they were, I don't know why, but they were tales about uh, when she was growing up because she was born in 1900. And so she grew up without electricity, without plumbing, without um, automobiles. She used to be in a horse and carriage. So we would hear, you know, all these stories. And I later learned some of them she was making up, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but they were very entertaining. And, you know, we would just <laughs> breathlessly await granny's hot tales. <laughs> you know, my mom was born 1912. Wow. Yeah. My dad was born in 1919. That was my dad's birth year. Really? Yeah. He lived to be 94 and a half. My dad was 88 when he passed. That's still a, that's still a great maybe, age. Maybe I can live that long. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I should be so lucky. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, what schools did you go to again? Uh, well, I went to, I, I got a BA from the University of Oklahoma. Uh, I attended OSU my first year and then went to, it's kind of hard to have the college experience when daddy is a dean. So oh. I went to the other university at Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, you know, um, to OU. What did you major in? Do you, do you like journalism or English? I, I minored in journalism mm -hmm. and um, I majored in French. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even tell you why other than I was always fascinated by France. I had tested out of all of the English requirements um, and uh, I just, I got into French and um, my degree is a liberal arts degree. So, and my minor was journalism, um, actually public relations within journalism. You're married? Yes, I'm married. Mm -hmm. Been married 33 years. We have two children, two daughters. They're both grown. One lives in New Orleans and the um, she's a teacher, an art teacher. And the other is a um, hydrogeologist who lives in Oakland, California. What was your first job when you graduated? Well, I worked as a model and charm school teacher all the way through high school. My first job um, in the um, using my degree was with a real estate franchise company. Uh, I did their newsletter and I did public relations and advertising. And then um, I went to work for the Oklahoma State Tourism Department. Oh. I like to say that's when I started writing fiction. <laughs> oh, do tell. Well, making Oklahoma seem like a tourist destination was. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but no, I, I did that, and it was it was a wonderful job, and I really enjoyed it. And I met my husband um, when the Oklahoma Navy, well, the Oklahoma governor put together the Oklahoma Navy to come to New Orleans for Oklahoma Day at the World's Fair. Yeah. And um, so it seemed like we were destined for New Orleans from the day we met. And actually, after, he lived in Tulsa. I lived in Oklahoma City. There was a hundred mile turnpike. Oh. Um, you know, it's kind of a long story, but we got married. We went uh, and, and the day we got back from our honeymoon, he had a phone call from, he was a TV news reporter. Oh. Stationed in New Orleans, um, wanting to, because. You know, he had sent out resumes and I had sent out resumes. We both made the same amount of money and it was, well, who's going to move, Tulsa or Oklahoma City? The and the tourism department worked it so that I could work through their ad agency, which had offices both places. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I was going to move to Tulsa, but then we got back from our honeymoon and he had this job offer. He went for the interview. I worked, you know, one week and gave two weeks notice and we went to New Orleans and we were there 27 years. Mm. Um, yeah. So. So Bob and I have been married this April, 30 years. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Man. Big anniversary coming up. <laughs> My birthday's in May too, so wow. Be fun next yeah. <laughs> um, when did you start to become a writer of novels? Uh, I started when I had my first child. Yes. Um, I was working at that point when we moved to New Orleans. Um, I worked for a hotel, and then the hotel became. Um, the general manager be, became a regional manager. So there were seven hotels um, in seven different states that I was also handling public relations and advertising for. And so I w wanted to quit when I had my child mm -hmm. and they wouldn't accept my resignation. They said, sure. no, rethink this. You can do it from home. We can work something out. So we worked out that I would work from home um, and I would come into the hotel half days, three days a week. Oh, yeah. It was ideal. I mean, really, it was ideal. Um, the whole plan had always been when I had a child, I wanted to stay home and um, start writing. And I got serious about it. Um, I joined 
well, first of all, I, I decided what to write. And uh, I loved reading romance novels. And um, it was uh, a genre that was booming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to write the short silhouette um, Harlequin type books mm -hmm. because I was intimidated at the thought of writing 400 pages. It just seemed mm -hmm. kind of overwhelming, but I thought maybe I can write 200 pages. And I hadn't even read those books, but I bought a bunch and just kind of submerged myself mm -hmm. in them. And um, I joined the local chapter of Romance Writers of America um, I bought a bunch of how to write books mm -hmm. and um, I started going to the meetings at, uh, at, at the local chapter and um, I met some people and we formed a critique group. We would meet once a month on a Saturday at a coffee shop and we would yeah. exchange chapters oh, yeah. and we would critique each other's work. And I learned so much doing that, not just about my work, but about theirs, you know, why does this work and, and this doesn't? What does this need? What, you know, what is lacking? So um, anyway, through this process, I wrote a book and it didn't sell, but by the time I had exhausted all the places I could send it to sell it, I was um, better than halfway through the next book. Yeah. And that book actually did sell. I went to um, a writer's conference and I, it had been up there, sitting there for eight months. And I went to a conference that had an editor from um, that publishing house. And um, she said, I'll check on it and I'll give you a call. Yeah. And I kind of thought, yeah, sure. But she did. And um, it had been sent to an outside writer, mm -hmm. uh, an outside reader rather, um, which is something that they routinely did. And um, they, she said, I moved it up in the senior editor's inbox, moved it up in the stack. And then she called me a week or so later and she said, the senior editor thought it would be better for the romance line. That is the sweet line that doesn't have, um, you know, sex or whatever. So she sent it over to that editor and that um, editor, wanted to buy it. And the girl that I had met, even though she didn't really, she worked for another line, I don't remember what it was, mm -hmm. but because I'd met her, she got to be my editor. So that was my first entree into publishing. And then after three or four books, I got an agent. I wanted to move into the larger books like I like to read. And, um, and that's kind of the story of how I got into it. have you written so far, dear? I've written 19. Um, the new one. Yes, there it is. That's how we call it. She gets that from me. I want now, this one is women's fiction. This is beyond romance. Um, it has a romance primarily focuses on the developing love story between a man and a woman. And um, I wanted to move into books that had female heroines and dealt with female topics, but that, and maybe had uh, an element of romance. I mean, I think that's fascinating topic. So I always put that in, but I didn't want it to be exclusively about that because, you know, our worlds are so much bigger than that. So, um, so yeah, I moved into women's fiction about, this is, I guess, my fourth book. Uh, you had several different genres. Yes. And what was the theme that went through all these books? You know, um, they have varying themes, but they always, at some point, revolve around the redeeming power of love. And um, the moral? That, that love is always the correct response. It is always the answer, um, and. I kind of feel like love is like a rising tide, lifts all ships. When you get love into your life and, and it, it really works its way on your heart, it lifts all relationships in your life. So you see a light throughout the whole book. Yes. Um, let's talk more about the other books. Okay. 
Uh, do you have some there that you could show me? Or? Um, yes, I have. This is The French War Bride. Yeah. This yeah. was the book before this one. And um, uh, it is, this one was really inspired by my father, who mm -hmm. was in World War II. He was an aviator. Mm -hmm. And um, and my husband's father was a doctor in World War II. So um, I, you know, did this, I, I know because I'm a Francophile and majored in French and have spent some, some time in France, I wanted to, um, I wanted to do a story about World War II from the perspective of a young French woman. So um, it tells kind of a coming of age of a girl and her family and- um, yeah. 18, 19 years old. Yes, yes. And, and then she marries this American and comes to America as a war bride. Um, and the problem is she has tricked him on some fronts uh, in order to bring the child of um, her best friend, who was actually the child of a Nazi, the baby. Um, oh, shoot, you really are creative. Well, well, you know, uh, what, what's interesting is some of these things, I mean, I've been contacted by people where this happened, you know, this sort of thing actually <laughs> happened to people. But anyway, she, she tricks the, um, the doctor and anyway, so, um, but that is the, 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 that is that story. And then there is the one before that. Was the navigator in the second world war. He, huh? He was a navigator. He was a navigator, yes. Navy. Yes, B-17s, yeah. And then this is the wedding tree. Oh, which, I like Yeah, uh, it's uh, the, the name of a town, fictional town in Louisiana. Um, and actually this book is also, there's also when they move to the United States, they go to wedding tree, so. This town is consistent, but the people aren't. I mean, you, they're sta completely standalone books, but they do end up in this little town of Wedding Tree. And the book I'm working on now is another Wedding Tree story set in the 1950s. So it's like a tr trilogy? Well, yeah, it sort of is, except they're not reliant on each other. It isn't like one picks up where the other leaves off. They don't even take place at the same point in time necessarily, mm -hmm. but it is one town. And um, uh, so- A little sliver of the town in Of continuity there. Yeah. <laughs> I, my, I was a typesetter. I sell good oh. books, uh, you know, the old style ticker tape. Yeah, they graduated to computers, and now they don't do VIP or anything like that. They have to do computers now. Yeah. Oh, I enjoyed what I did. You know, I did graphic arts and there. Oh, that takes a lot of talent. Dad got me into that. He said, "Pat, you need a something to work. Do <laughs> well, maybe do it." So I did. And I enjoyed it. So, oh, good. What are you doing now? I'm working on this, uh, the book I was just mentioning that's also set in Wedding Tree. It's, uh, it's set in the 1950s. It, um, one thing that I guess is you ask about, you know, the theme of the books. One thing that does seem to recur a lot is mm -hmm. um, things that people keep secret, secrets that come out. And um, usually people do that because they're ashamed uh, of what others okay. will think and they're afraid. Oh. So um, those are, you know, those are topics that I deal with. Yeah. So, um, and she gets that from me. There were there were some other topics. There were um, uh, the topics of how uh, we all want to belong to a family. You know, we all um, have that yearning for uh, a, a deep connection with other people. Um, there's also the theme of how. Whether or not we're aware of it, we are influencing and rubbing off or um, 
somehow affecting the people around us all the time. We like all networking. Hmm? Like networking or something like that. No well, way. Not that, but that we we brush off on each other and we don't even realize the impact we're having on someone else, perhaps for better or for worse, for good or, you know, we just, um, and also how people would be less judgmental of each other if we knew the full story, because, you know, people are, um, we're all kind of products of our past and what we've been through and it, it skews how we see things and how we re react to things. So um, we would all have more empathy if we knew, the full story about each other. And the great thing about novels is you can kind of, you can let the reader do that. I do believe that yeah. reading novels, fiction, it makes people more empathetic. Yeah. And- um, How do you do research? Um, it depends on what I'm researching. The World War II book took a lot because uh, not everything was online. You know, there were a, a lot of things that, happened you know before the internet things did not get online so um i had i did interviews um old newspapers old magazines all of those things uh this current book there it gets into a lot of um modern day um fertility treatments there is the the, the book is a woman who is single and she can't uh, she doesn't she's She's running out of time because she has um, a physical problem and she's, if she wants to have a child, she has to do it or, you know, in a year or two, she won't be able. So uh, it, it deals with fertility centers, um, people, women that are married that can't have babies that want them. It's, uh, I had to do a lot of research of that. Much of that was online. That was also interviews with and doctors and fathers. patients. The donors, how they mm -hmm. react when they get to meet any of their offspring. Yes, that's that was that's kind of the topic of um, of of the book is. Uh, is there a law against knowing who your child is if you're a donor? Do they put a a wall? It used to be, um, but lately more and more. Um, donors have a, a clause where when the child is 18, if they want to contact them, they can. Yeah. Um, but usually, I think there are preventions from, you can't just go looking for your child. You yeah. know, if somebody has your, your baby from your contribution, you can't just go disrupt that person's life. But when they're 18, if the two of you want to meet, then, then they will facilitate that. Oh, okay. so, it's very much the Wild West, the uh, fertility laws right now. They're different in every state, and um, they're not necessarily very explicit in a lot of states. So, um, Like frozen embryo. Yes, all of that. Right. I didn't get into that. I didn't want to address the moral issues of that. Most of your books, are they moral to it? Yes. Yes. I believe in God and I believe that uh, in a spiritual side to life. But I also I believe that everybody has to come to that on their own. So I don't. I don't preach, but I do show that there is a need and a hole and an answer, um, you know, from God. Yes. Yeah. What would you like to say to my audience to encourage them to do writing or whatever suits their fancy and do a good job of it? Well, I think if you want to write, and a lot of people do, and I used to teach courses mm -hmm. um, on, on this, how to write a novel. Um, there are Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays in a week, but there are no some days. So if you think someday I'm going to write a novel, you need to just start. You, know? you need to get over the fear of the blank page and the fear of you don't know what to do. It's like painting. You will learn as you do it. 
You can't learn by just reading about it. And you probably know a lot more than you think you know, because virtually all writers were first readers. And so you absorb a lot about um, the structure of a novel and what, you know, how books are shaped and how they're written. You know more than you probably think you do. Is it fun doing? It's not work, it's really fun. Or I know it's a lot of research. It's work. I've got to say it is work. <laughs> There are moments when it's flowing and um, it's almost not of me. It's just coming from I don't know where and it's just, you know, going on the and it's magical and that's wonderful. And towards the end of a book, it gets um, very exciting because it's like I can hold the whole book in my head at one time and I can see where it's going. And it's like the words are just, you know, rushing around in the middle. But there are a lot of days where you just slog. You know you need to do this scene and get to the next one and you don't really have any inspiration and you just, it's a hard slog. And there's a lot of rewriting. You go back and you mm. fix what you did. But when all is said and done, I think it's hard to tell the inspired parts from the, uh, the slog parts. Mm. Uh, so. It, uh, it's like therapy, right? <laughs> yes. I write lyrics, I have songs out. I don't sing, that's it. But I do have songs out, other people are singing. Well, that's wonderful. That is such a gift. I that just anyway, wonderful. ever heard of Patricia Conroy, Canadian singer? Well, it, I wrote Godspeed when my husband had to uh, move to get to another place and then I move after he finds uh -huh. a place. And I wrote that and it was done in Nashville. Oh, wonderful. With Patricia Conroy and one of the head honchos of the of publishers and stuff. They recorded it. And, yeah. So I should send that to you if you wish. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Yes, that well, would be great. This is the end of our show, kid. Okay. Get on again when you do another when you finish that uh, the next book. Okay. Book. Um, I should mention that this is um, yesterday. It started um, for sale in Targets. Targets. Uh huh. So you can go in a Target and uh, buy it, and of course it's online and at Barnes and Nobles and um, most bookstores. And if people want an autograph, the the Oz will put your uh, website on yes yeah my website robinwells.com and i can send you a book plate that you can you know i can uh, sign it something that you can then stick in the front that's great yeah great. I'd be happy to do that and also if anybody has a book club and um they want to do my book i will do a um um skype or zoom you know that's good I'll attend, you know. I was going to mention that, but you got ahead of me. <laughs> so this is Patty Hunter, Patty's Page. Thank you, Robin Well, Well, thank you for having me. We'd love to have you back. I, you're, you're a joy to home, to behold. So uh, thank you. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. Well, we'll see you next week, and God bless. Godspeed.